Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. I've got another action figure review for you today and we're going to take a look at the Star Wars Black Series Bo-Katan Kreese from The Mandalorian. Uh, so we're going to jump into it. As always, do subscribe if you're new to the channel and you don't want to miss any of the content. I really appreciate it. Do leave a like on this video if you enjoy it. So let's jump into it. So what's going to come in the pack? So you are going to get two blaster pistols, the iconic um, kind of akimbo pistols. Um, the ARC Troopers use and Mandalorian sort of warriors use, um, obviously predominantly Death Watch and obviously, um, you know, Bo-Katan used to be uh, a Death Watch member and then she kind of broke off, um, you know, when Darth Maul got invo in involved um, in terms of, you know, <laughs> ruling Mandalore. Um, wrongly and that sort of thing and, and, and taking over the death watch and using them as pawns um, in terms of her blaster pistols they look really cool in terms of um, uh, I really like the akimbo pistol look um, in terms of the actual real life application to the kind of action figure um, blaster pistols there's a lack of detail really I mean the brown and, and grey is something but I mean even the brown um, you know of the grip has like no detail and the grey you know there's a few few different shapes on there but it's you know it's a little bit underwhelming so not amazing on the blaster pistols pretty standard stuff um, would have been nicer for maybe a darker grey actually um, you know more of a gunmetal grey but in terms of you know pistols you know they're they'll do I guess um, but I, I would have liked um, either a little bit more definition or just like a different colour scheme. Um, in terms of the helmet, it is removable and obviously, take a look at that, what an amazing looking helmet it is. I mean, the rangefinder is uh, movable, which is awesome. Um, and then obviously her Clan Kree's um, emblem on the, the front of the helmet. And it's so good looking, this thing looks absolutely awesome, it's fantastic. You've got the kind of weathering um, and like you know dents and slices and and the weathering of the paint you can see in the front and the chipping of the paint um, this helmet looks absolutely fantastic and uh, I really like it when a helmet is removable and you get a, a head sculpt um, um, you know for a character like this with a Mandalorian so that's really good it's like a rubbery texture so it will just um, slot over the top uh, in terms of um, other accessories technically I guess you could count the uh, the uh, jetpack as an accessory. It just just pops on with the single peg. Um, obviously, you know it's not often that we saw her without it. So um, you know that pops on there. And again, looking awesome. And uh, I'm glad that that came uh, with the figure. Um, in terms of the scale, I mean she's quite a short figure as they go. Like this is you know. Uh, Bo-Katan next to the Mandalorian and obviously she's a little bit of a shorter um, uh, character um, but you know she she packs a punch as much as um, the next one um, you know she is one of the most predominant females in the Star Wars universe and she kicks ass and takes names on a on a regular basis so um, really really glad she was uh, featured in the Mandalorian TV show and I thought it was an awesome way to utilize her and add her to the story and the lore even more uh, in terms of the the actress uh, I believe it's Katie Sackhoff and in terms of a head sculpt uh, I mean I think this head sculpt's pretty damn good. It kind of reminds me of the Dooku head sculpt, where you know it's both um, reminiscent of the actor slash actress that played them in the live action, but also just the character in general. Um, this just screams Bo-Katan Kreese to me, you know, with the, the famous silver kind of uh, uh, headband. Um, I think the face sculpt is really good. I'm I'm hearing a lot of people complain about kind of you know like the hair and stuff, but I mean for you know uh, red fiery sculpted hair that looks pretty damn awesome you could go in and weather it a bit to give it some more definition but I definitely think her face sculpt you know the head it, the, the face on the head is awesome uh, and I do think that overall this is an amazing looking figure in terms of the design I mean they've nailed her from you know the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian in my opinion I mean I love the colour scheme the browns the greys the silvers the blues of the Death Watch um, and in terms of the actual design Yes, they've absolutely nailed it, but the paint application is where, um, you know, I'm really pleased with this figure. I mean, from the ground up, when you take a look, like with the, you know, like with the helmet and the weathering, um, if I can get that to focus for you, I mean, just look at that. I mean, she looks, you know, she's got the paint 
sort of chipping look and that's all you know painted on so you know the um the helmet there is amazing and then obviously from the ground up you've got the different shades of brown in the boots and you know the lighter the darker the, the blue shin guards with the kind of gray um paint chipping and and the wear on the on the beskar armor plates up to the knees the gray of the kind of trousers the the brown of the holsters you know the brown leather look of the the belt um and again you know with the holsters they're flexible nice and uh, rubbery so they don't get in the way it makes her articulation um her articulation better um so you know loving the detail here and they've they've just nailed the the paint application and the design in my opinion like the detailing is fantastic you know you can see on her gauntlet uh, looks awesome again it's kind of like with mando you know these mandalorian um characters like um you know bo katan the mandalorian boba fett they've got so many accessories and they've got such an awesome looking um you know kind of set of armor and you know you can see her um clan Kree's uh emblem on the shoulder pauldron really good again browns and and grays and blues all all mixing together really well looks absolutely beautiful um, in terms of the the silver kind of beskar with the you know the um the kind of scoring on it like it's you know again paint chipping or sort of weathered you know from her being um you know the warrior that she is looks awesome and in terms of you know on the back the jetpack again it's just the silver and the blue but they've nailed the the combination of the two uh, and it does look really good um you know i think they've really nailed the actual paint application um and and you know you could argue yes it's a simple design to silver and blue but that's easier said than done when you're trying to make something look awesome on a budget um, and you know the Black Series line does a great um, a great job of that and Hasbro um, you know are awesome at that so uh, in terms of articulation you know moving uh, on to articulation from the ground up you know when you take a look at her feet unfortunately the back of the um, the boot does get stuck on this um, raised piece of the boot as you can see so you don't you can't have a toe point I'm sure if you do this yeah and you you force it up there you do get the toe point so it is a little bit deceptive um, straight out of the box you're probably gonna think oh I don't know if I want to push that but it will go and I'm so glad that it does because if she didn't have a toe point that would be very disappointing um, taking a look at that although the kind of ball socket for the 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 toe point you know for the ankle joint is protruding a lot um, it, I mean I'm I'm just glad that you get that much um, of a range like that's a really really good toe point um, and you know she's a Mandalorian so she needs that um, you know she needs to be dynamic and she obviously has a lot of presence you know I mean take a look at her she looks if I can get her in focus she looks absolutely awesome you know especially with the helmet she looks fantastic there you go um she looks absolutely fantastic and she needs to uh you know be poseable and have um some some dynamic uh, articulation about her too so to kind of complement that if you go up to the legs you've got these overhanging um, knees so it's not double jointed it's just single and she do does go just past 90 so um you know for a single joint that's really good in terms of in <clears throat> in the hips like we've talked about when you know there's no um, obstructions there that's really good because it means you can get these kind of like high kicks uh, you know she'll go to 90 at the front um, and she'll come into the back as well really high so that's nice she can get her, her leg right up to the jetpack actually so that's you know amazing articulation in the legs um, all things considered she gets a pretty good down split um, uh, you know in terms of dynamic poses you can really um, she's really pliable you can really bend her into these lower you know kind of looking poses where she's you know maybe just landed or sweeping a leg or going for a high kick um <clears throat> so yeah really good in terms of the lower torso that is just um a set kind of molded core so the um the belt doesn't move the um the straps and the um holsters for the blaster pistols do move as I said 
um, they've got a nice little bit of bend in them so they just slide in there and to be fair the presence of these holsters is really good um, you know even with the weapons holstered she looks menacing uh, which is awesome they're not kind of the bulky looking holsters that you get sometimes on the older figures um, they're more fitted to the you know to the blaster pistols you can see this the shaping there so that's that's really nice um yeah moving on from the torso to the upper torso this is obviously the bottom is set and the top is the bit that you can wiggle so in terms of side to side she's got a little bit of a wiggle there in terms of forward and back um, she's not got much in the way of a crunch but you know it, it is fine in terms of She's going to have enough leg articulation, arm articulation, and head articulation to not worry about that so much. You know, you can really bend her, um, you know, around to kind of make up for the lack of um, <clears throat> torso movement. I mean, you could add a little bit of torso movement in there, I'm sure, and it would, you know, it'd make the figure even better. But in terms of, you know, the movement, you know, she could be doing uh, a backflip like that and look. <clears throat> you know look awesome uh, in terms of display again she's got so much presence um, you know with the helmet off or on um, but you know especially on I mean that helmet looks absolutely awesome you got the oh throwing it at the camera you know you got the the range finder um, and you know she looks really menacing looks awesome so in terms of a display she would be uh, you know she'd be rocking it um for me toy photography wise you know she is ideal she's a mandalorian um you know she's got great articulation so uh, you know she, she can be in lots of uh, awesome shots um you know i mean just look at her i mean you could strike her into these kind of dynamic poses like you know she's ready to go one leg straight one leg bent in that kind of fighting stance and she really does look the part I mean, and like we've talked about with Mandalorian helmets, just the tilt of a helmet, and you can you can portray such emotion. So, awesome in that uh, in that regard. In terms of the the arms, if I can get her into focus for you again, brilliant. Okay, so we can get a 360 spin on the wrist, but there is no uh, there's no joint allowing us to fold it in or out. Um, in terms of the elbow, she's got a single joint. And it goes up inside um, the arms, quite skinny arms, um, because of the size of the character. She's a shorter, more slender character, so um, they're kind of hindered by, um, well, not hindered, but restricted by that to, to keep it to single joints. And I'm glad they did, to be honest. I don't want her arms being all gangly and bulky um, and too long, so, you know, that's a good design there. She would go just past 90, and to be honest, that's enough. Like, that's pretty good, like, when you consider what she's going to be doing um, you know with the blast pistols and um, punches kicks and all that sort of thing you know that's that's more than enough in terms of the shoulders the pauldrons are um, if I get that to focus for you um, so the the shoulder pauldrons are like hard molded plastic and they go up underneath the the um, kind of Beskar uh, shoulder here of the of the chest plate that kind of connects to her shoulders um, so it goes up underneath that will get her to a T pose at 90 and uh, she'll go around um, as normal so that's, that's pretty good in terms of the articulation in the head with the helmet like even so because the, you know there's a lot of clearance here you can get really good side to side uh, really good up and down and again she's got that you know she's got the kind of dumbbell um, neck joint where there's like a ball in there comes up and the ball in the head which means that she's got 360 um, you know articulation in the head uh, and then she's got really good side to side um, and then for, forward and back sort of up and down you know if I can get her into focus for you again um, she's got that kind of chicken neck like we talked about so she can look really um, sort of chin to chest down or look back and up um, but Obviously, because of the dumbbell joint, it means that she's got these like abilities to get into all of the diagonal poses in between um, and the angled poses, which is really nice. And I found that she does, you know, she does move really well with the helmet on. You know, like we talked about with Mando, you know, she's looking at you like this. She's looking down at you like this across her shoulder. You know, it looks really good. She's looking up, and you're doing 
a kind of shot like this where you need to have her kind of flying you can have a camera angle like this where the helmet is facing up more and although you can see the face underneath you can use the trickery of the camera angles to sort of um, sort of play with that so I mean she looks absolutely awesome so in terms of you know utilizing her dynamic nature and the, the jetpack kind of aspect of her you can do so like I said she gets a really good tilt with the helmet so that's good and that helmet comes off nice and freely so you know you don't have to worry about um, wrenching the head off or anything like that um, in terms of you know uh, versatility like I said she's a Mandalorian she's a warrior I um, mean you know, she's a she's a fighter um, she's been so prevalent in the, the Clone Wars Rebels and now the Mandalorian and obviously it'd be interesting to see where she kind of fits in with the, the original trilogy era and you know beyond towards the sequels so I'm really looking forward to uh, you know seeing her story furthered um, <clears throat> in you know the future Disney Plus um, um, pieces that I'm sure she'll feature in. So you know she's an awesome character. Um, you know very transfer very transferable in terms of you can put her in all sorts of um, you know law kind of displays and shots photography wise but you can take liberties and put her in all sorts of situations. I know I will um, you know with my toy photography aspects. Um, you know, just put her in, putting her in situations where she's just clearly kicking ass of anyone who you know dares to get in her way. Um, so, um, you know, in her, her quest to take back Mandalore. Um, so, in terms of you know overall score, I think she's awesome. I think she's going to get a nine out of ten from me. Um, I think she's definitely worth a pick up. Um, I have ordered, um, you know, her other Mandalorian, um, uh, you know, kind of um, understudy, if you will. Um, from the Mandalorian uh, TV series that we saw um, and I've ordered two of those because I feel like you know although she has a head sculpt underneath you could kind of have her as the two Death Watch um, associates that um, uh, or you know ex Death Watch associates that she, you know Bo-Katan has um, rather than just the one and I like the idea that they'd be like a squad of um, kick-ass females um, so uh, I've ordered two of those. I, I think it's Reeves, I believe, is the name of the of the the second um, female Mando, um, and she's kind of the same build. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to getting her in on a pre-order and and uh, reviewing her too. So that's going to do it here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it was informative. Do leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. Uh, throw a comment down below if you've got anything to say, and uh, I'll try and engage with you. But um, I will leave you with this one guys and uh, take care, I'll see you in the next one.